Hey guys, how's it going? James here, and today I want to talk about uh, some exciting stuff coming to uh, Elder Scrolls Legends. And if you haven't heard already, um, there's going to be the very, very first legitimate expansion coming out. Uh, I believe it's sometime next week. I'm not completely sure. I will leave a link uh, to Legends Deck legenddex.com in the description and you guys I encourage you to go read this for yourself there's tons of stuff so I'm, I'm not gonna go into all of it I'm just gonna go over some uh, just some key cards that they actually released the full you know you can see the full the full card there's a spread of about I think nine cards or something I didn't count can't remember uh, that you could kinda read some of the text and there's a little article uh, on legendex where it says let's try to guess them it's kinda cool um, so, you know, first of all, I just want to say I'm really excited. Uh, this is a game that has sparked my interest and has kept my interest for a long time. And I, I plan on to, I plan to continue to do these videos and continue to play this game. Um, so, yeah. And I want to apologize, not that anyone probably cares, but I haven't done a video in about a week because I was in uh, Anchorage, Alaska for business, for work. So, um... Yeah, I haven't been able to do any videos. So, without further ado, apologize for the shaky camera. A uh, new PC hopefully is coming soon, guys. Hopefully. So, uh, bear with me. Uh, let's talk about these cards that I uh, that we can see. Uh, first card, let's just... I'm just going to go random. There's no rhyme or reason. So, let's go with this one because this is the one that I'm most excited about. Gardener of Swords. Well, not most excited about, but... Gardener of Swords. Uh, when you equip an item to another creature equip a copy of it to Gardener Swords and the reason why I guess I'm really excited about this one is because I have a deck that I actually created myself and I'm not, I'm not saying that because it's real difficult it's not it's really easy in this game right now to create a whole brand new unique deck that nobody's ever created before but it is very hard to create one that wins a lot or wins in general right on the ladder anyways so um the deck that I created, I call it WMDs, and we will be playing a game with that deck. Um, really would benefit from a card like this, especially from it being such a low cost. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited, excited about that. Uh, let's get rid of that. Bear with me, guys. I'm not the best here at this uh, OBS thing. Uh, we'll do that and move on to the next one. And this is another card that I'm really excited about because I love the orcs concept and red, and I think red is due for something and this card kind of it helps out um stone shard orc uh, three cost two one summon deal one damage to an enemy creature for each orc each friendly orc you have um, I, I really i really like this card um, this is something that i think is going to bring some more versatility to red that it it desperately needs so uh not much just you know i'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna go into in-depth analysis about this guys i don't like to make these videos too long and as said before, I will leave a link and you guys can go, I'll leave a link to a couple websites where you can go and read this stuff. I encourage you to go read read this um, and, can, and help support the game as well. <sighs> Alright, so um, yeah, let's remove that. Let's go to the next one. And this is Ring of Imaginary Might. This this card, uh, it's a 0-2, it's a 4 cost item. For zero two, or, or I'm sorry, <laughs> wherever you apply it, you get zero two, and the wielder power, bec the wielder's power becomes equal to its health. Um, this card, I believe, can see play in any deck. Um, there's a lot of decks and a lot of cards in purple or anything you want to match with that, where you know you can do some pretty insane stuff. Uh, a lot of cards right now that. Uh, I can't remember the names of them, uh, but you know, just just right off the bat, some cards that really aren't really aren't playable right now, kind of are, but um, would would really benefit from this card. Let me move it out of the way and show you two cards that I'm really really kind of psyched about with this one. Um, let's see, let's type in Regen because I know that one card has it. Right here, uh, Old Gate Warden. That that's a a pretty good combo right there. And then I can't remember the other the other card. It's a um 
it's a neutral color, and some people might disagree with me on this call. Portcullis, that's what it's called. I believe so. Yeah. And maybe not so much. I mean, the fact that it's prophecy, and if you already have a Ring of Imaginary Might in your hand, and you can drop this out on a prophecy and the next turn pop that, it could really, you know, really be, really be cool. And a lot of people probably wouldn't be hard pressed to remove portcullis because it really doesn't pose a threat when you put it on the board right away it's just kind of annoying more than anything but once it becomes a 9-9 for five costs or even free if it's a prophecy that's pretty good so and there's you know a bunch of other cards that it can go really well with but uh we're not going to go to we're not going to go into that anymore we're going to remove this and we're going to um hop on the ladder and i will show you guys um my uh, match history here. I wanted to show that uh, proof that this deck is winning. It's not the best, but uh, I will leave a link to the description. A link to this deck in the description at Legends Decks, where you can see uh, this deck. It it has changed. Excuse me, guys. I'm talking and trying to navigate. Sometimes I just my brain doesn't <laughs> work. Um, it has changed from its original form for, uh, you know, quite a bit. So, um, if I look at my match history here, uh, the, the last three games I've won two, but I did have a streak down here, uh, to, to, to right down here where I was doing pretty good. Out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I only lost two. And this is what actually got me from rank five, and you can see it continued. It wasn't so bad. Started losing... So I thought I'll play Archer, then I wasn't feeling it. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go back to my deck. Um, and it's actually what got me out of rank 5 into rank 4. So, um, yeah, you guys can see my real shitty arena statuses. I'm not very good at arena. So without further ado, I will show you the deck in here. So if you want, you can screenshot it. I'll just talk about the cards just a little bit. Um, and I'll try to get my my best overview. You know, at first I wasn't sure. I knew what I was going for in this deck. But, um... I'm not very good at deck building, so it took me a while to kind of... Uh, really refine it. And I'm sure a lot of people might look at this and be like, that's Stupid, 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 stupid. And they might, you know, be able to put something together that's way better. But this works for me. It's really fun. And, and I really encourage everybody to... Uh, Try something new. Get some different decks rolling, and you really have a lot of fun. Uh, instead of just doing what I think what they call net decking is where I, I don't know what why, but I guess that's where you you just go find the best deck that's online and copy it and play it. Um, uh, but I, I do that as well. I do copy some decks, and you know, but I like some of my flavor in them. Do my own. It's really it's a lot funner, and I highly encourage it. So, anyways, um, Nord Firebrands. I was really questioning myself on these because this deck I'm really I really am going for an aggressive deck, um, but these offer really good utility, um, and uh, for zero cost. So I'm not too sure. I was thinking about switching those out with Fire Imp, um, Crown Quartermaster. Again, we're going for lots of weapons in this deck. Uh, of course, it doesn't mean you want to equip. You want to have every weapon in here. You get too much and you just flood your hand with, you know weapons. A Steel Scimitar, in my opinion, one of the best uh, value items in the game for weapons wise. Graystone Ravager, just because it's prophecy, it's a good 2 drop. Um, uh, of course, Rahad Horseman, you gotta have in a deck like this. Shrieking Harpy, something I did add later. Uh, I think I replaced it with... Uh, <sighs> what did I replace it with? Um, Plunder, because that was getting too... Plunder was getting too many items in my hand. Um, so Shrieking Harpy offers us a little bit more control and a little bit more um, versatility to you know to for us to go face and and for this deck face is not always the place um, you can control the deck but you do it in a different way uh, and I'll exp I'll try to explain that when we get into this match uh, and we're, how far are we we are nine and a half minutes into this so we have time to go over this and maybe play one or two games. Uh, Skill Blacksmith, of course, I think this is a card that you have to play in this deck. Um, I think, I don't know, maybe three of them might be better, but of course, it goes without saying. Um, 
Battle Rage Orc, again, we have an aggressive deck, so being able to have some uh, instant reach uh, really helps out. Um, cast out... Uh, this card... Uh, I think it fits really well in this deck. Um, being that it's prophecy as well, it can really, really turn the tides. And you could really play games with this. You can, you know, when people are dropping out that card that is really going to set their tone for the rest of the match. And if, if you have two of these, you need one of them in your hand. Two of them, it's really fun. But if you have one, you know, it really can allow you to get more damage to the face and set yourself up for something else. Uh, Burn and Pillage being one of them. Uh, Crushing Blow is something I did add to this deck. I can't remember what I took out. I think it was... Um, Oh, sorry about the camera, guys. My big belly's pushing my computer up. Oh, God. Witherhand Cultist. Uh, Witherhand Cultist really hurt us more than it helped us. It is a deck, that, a card that you might be able to fit in this kind of a deck to really work to help you out with some control mage or action mages or action decks or whatever. But Crushing Blow, you know, it's one of the best cards in the game, so kind of hard to go without it. And that coupled with Lightning Bolt can really, uh, in the game, if the opponent even has if it has over 10 health you know uh being that you know these are lightning bolts of prophecy uh really helps out if you can get the opponent down to just enough health where if you have a couple of these in your hand you know they don't know what's coming uh more cool gatekeeper uh after its recent buff and i call it a buff because it has prophecy now it's kind of a, a card that you want to run in, in a deck like this and in, in most battle mage decks i believe it's just a really good card uh, buffing your other cards really helps uh, synergize with all the other stuff going on. Rahad Battle Mage is the uh, Rahad Horseman's brother. Uh, really good card when you have uh, items in your deck. Uh, Stone Throw. Uh, kind of back and forth with this card. I'm not sure if I want to replace this with some other items or not. But it really does come in handy because more often than not you do have more tough, more attack or toughness than other cards on the board and if you don't it's really easy to buff them uh alikers alikers survivalist i can never pronounce this um this card obviously in this deck I, i've won so many games with this card um because there's other threats on the board potentially there's always other threats on the board that are uh, more threatening than this card at the moment and they won't focus on it and it's really easy to buff them up if you have a couple weapons in your hand to even get to 10 damage just to, you know, top it off. Earthbone Spinner, I put this in here just because it adds a little bit more versatility to our deck. We're trying to go face as much as possible. So silencing those big guard creatures to be able to go to face is, uh, it really helps. I've used this in many, many occasions to where I just need to break one more ruin so I can use Burn Pillage. Uh, Lightning Bolt goes without saying. Sentinel Battle Mage, another really good item. Uh, if you you are able to pop that on a uh, Rahad Horseman, you know there's <laughs> you know three plus seven, a nine. There's you, you just you got a nine. You got nine damage. <laughs> I mean, and you can do it pretty quick if you have it set up right. Burden Pillage, we've talked about it. It's just one of the best removals in the game. Um, really, really helps turn the tides. Uh, Master of Arms. I haven't really had... I put this in my deck really for just a finisher. And I've only had a couple of times where it's really paid off. Um, of course, it's just a paperweight if you haven't uh, discarded any um, weapons. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to keep this in my deck or not. I might replace this with uh, the new card that's coming out and maybe something else. Uh, Merrick... You know, this even though it does equip weapons, um, I'm not too sure about this card either. And I only threw it in here just because it, it, it goes with the theme, right? And if you do have some cards on the on the board that benefit from weapons, uh, this is just insane. So, uh, Let me know what you guys think, if you have any um, suggestions or whatever that, you know. Um, yeah. So I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> and we're going to get to playing. Well, I'm going to keep talking, but we're going to actually play a game. After all, I hope that's what most people watch these videos for. And we are going to play on the ladder. 
Um, let's see, we're currently rank four, and uh, hopefully we win some games. It there for a while when I was recording, I had the worst luck. I wasn't able to uh, get a good win streak going. So, but yeah, as I said before, um, I'm really excited that Direwolf is uh, in Bethesda or are continuing forward with this game and, and the fact that you know they're coming out with this expansion shows that uh, there's there's a future for this game or else you know why would they be coming out with an expansion so we're gonna toss Merrick keeping the uh, two three curve here is good uh, this deck doesn't have any one drops I don't believe <laughs> Have a master at arms right now is not good. What's funny, we toss the card that we only have one copy of to receive a card that we only have one copy of. Um, we'll toss this down over here. I highly doubt it will survive, which is fine. We don't have a weapon to follow up right now anyways, so we're not going to get a lot of value out of it. This is where the cast out becomes really fun. Although, I think wasting a cast out on that, I think using a cast out it, on that is a waste. We're just going to go ahead Blood and, and um, let him remove it. And this is. Let's see here. Do we go for. Yeah, because if he has a firebolt, I don't want to give it. I don't want to. Uncle Gatekeeper will be easy to remove. I'm ready so we'll just get some damage. Um, but as I was saying, one of the ways for this this deck uh, to be controlling and, and, and have some sort of removal is forcing the opponent to remove their own cards from the deck. Because you're so aggressive, you need to position stuff in the right way, um, they're just going to be removing most of their cards to, to try to control the board. So I know I don't know if that sounds stupid or not, but um, yeah, we're just gonna do it again. I don't want to waste the cast out, and uh, dropping this down and buffing itself seems stupid because I don't know. You might not have a fireball. It looks like a ward deck possibly. Let's drop this down. Let's hope we get a. Uh, let's hope we get a weapon. We buff it with the weapon and the uh, gatekeeper. Yeah, see, we haven't discarded any weapons, and having this guy in our hand is nothing. Do not vex me. Okay. Hey, there we go. So, let's see here, we'll drop this down. We don't want to return that to it. That's one of the things, too, with cast out. Be careful what you throw back, because you could potentially really be helping your opponent out. Um, there's no need to cast that out. Our survivor list looks good. It'll give us a 1-1 one, one weapon, which we could buff that. Give me a blade and a soft throat. I think that's what we're gonna do. By Onsi's bright blade. Let's see, he's gonna have all right, trigger to prophecy. Okay. That's not uh Not the worst. And, and, you know, that could be a card that we might want to cast out just so we can go go face. Uh, let's see. Let's Do not vex me. Excuse me. Alrighty. So. We want to hurry up. The clock is ticking. Um. Dropping this down, I don't believe is probably the best choice. I don't want to. I want to send that back to his hand and essentially heal it. So I think what we're gonna do. By Diagnos, oh. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's try to uh, keep this guy around for a little bit. And. Uh, ranks, let nothing through. Hmm. Let's buff. 
Let's see, let's just buff our Shrieking Harpy. Hopefully we get a Steel Scimitar or even a, a Battle Mace to throw on our Survivalist. Okay. Another Hiss Grove. See, he's got a really slow deck, so we could beat him. We haven't had the best draw. Um, you know, but if we had some better, uh, better aggression, he'd be, he'd be in trouble right now. Of course, he'd have a lot of cards. A lot more cards in his hand, too. Firebrand's not going to do us any good right now. We don't want to cast out anything, so I believe what the answer here is, force him to remove our cards, and in doing so, he'll remove his, um... And let's put a little, let's just, uh, let's just do as much damage as we can right now. Prophecy. Maybe a lightning bolt. Shooting harpy, okay. And, uh, we will just go ahead and maybe pass the turn. Um, he's going to wipe out that whole side. I don't feel this is necessary to take this out. It's not posing any kind of a threat. Let's just pass the turn. So it's not looking good for us. Um, obviously, burn and pillage probably would have been really good to have. Okay, so it didn't remove all of his creatures. Alright, this, this should could be, be good. good. <laughs> He said, "This <laughs> this should be good." I am a child. Of All right, now that is a perfect card to cast out. Do not vex me. It costs uh, a lot of mana, so he'll probably possibly play that next turn. And I think what we're going to do is use our Steel Scimitar here in hopes that he takes it out, and we could use Master of Arms next turn, and we will get Steel Scimitar and the uh, Iron Iron Sword or something. I think. So let's go ahead and just buff that. <laughs> More damage to the face, and hopefully, you know, with the more ruins we break, we're, we're really hoping to get a burn and pillage. That's the uh, dream draw right now, anyways. So I'm assuming he's going to throw that back out there. He kind of has to. I am a child of dark. And unfortunately, I think he's going to get some value out of it. So. Oh, look at that. That's not going to really help us, though. So I think what we'll do is um, we'll drop this over here. There's life in this old thing. Get this guy out of the way. And hopefully we can break the rest of his ruins and pop burn and pillage and it'll get rid of that and hopefully whatever else he has on the board. I'm wondering what he has in his hand. Maybe Odevang. I don't know. I'm not real familiar with the deck he's running. So. Okay, that's not good. Well, I mean... We have burden pillage, so. But I would like to break. I would have liked to break more ruins to get this guy. But we're just gonna go ahead and. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Yeah, on TV, we can't. Trigger both burden pillages, but we will have a very good opportunity next turn, depending on what he does. And honestly, it doesn't look like it's going. It doesn't look like we're going to win this. Well, it's looking a little better now, actually. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh. All we need is one Nord. <laughs> oh, goodness. Alright, let's see here. So, what's the play? What's the play? 
Luckily we're able to wipe this whole board. But if he has a lightning bolt or a crushing blow, it's over. We need to break one more ruin. Come dance with a master. I'll trigger prophecy. So I don't think we break another ruin. Well, let's do, do it. Hey, this is real tough. I mean, there's no need to. Because we can wipe this whole board now. I think we wait. I don't think we pop that ruin. Because three, four, five. Dang, we're just so close to beating him. So let's pop this. It's obvious. And drop down. Put this in this lane. I ride like the wind. Uh, I don't know if we want to put Shrieking Harpy down or not. I want to have the most damage on the board as possible, you know. He could have Ice Storm though, so. Let's see. If he triggers these right now, that now won't be the end of the world power. for us. Interesting to see. I hope he doesn't get the shackle. Who goes there? I live to serve. Hmm. All right. So if we put that, that's four. Looks like we got it. We'll put it on this guy. Do not test me. We don't even need to use our crushing blow. So. If I remember correctly, guys, uh, this deck that we played against, well, if I don't remember correctly, I, th I don't know if it's a top tier deck, but it's definitely a strong deck. So you can see that um, this WMD deck uh, does pretty good. And kind of didn't think we'd win that one for a minute. Um, let's see, where are we at? 27 minutes? Yeah. We'll call this video, uh, we'll cut this video off. Um, I don't like to have too long videos. I feel people are not interested if they're that long. But, you know, let me know, you guys, what you think. If you want to see longer videos, uh, more gameplay videos, more talk, I'd really be happy to take suggestions and, uh, you know, put out more videos. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. So, until next time, good luck and have fun.